Welcome to the second of two Concise NetHack videos about character attributes. The Concise NetHack videos show you what you need to know about specific NetHack areas without wasting your time. In this video, I'll show you what you need to know about the character attributes that I didn't cover in the Basic Attributes Concise NetHack video. That video covers strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. The attributes in NetHack are complicated, so I don't tell you everything about every attribute. I just describe what I pay attention to when I play. You can learn lots more on nethackwiki.com. Uh, some attributes are displayed. Um, let's talk about those. This is your alignment attribute. Alignment means whether you are lawful, neutral, or chaotic. Other things in NetHack also have an alignment, like monsters, altars, and artifacts. You can choose your alignment when you start a game. I'll talk briefly about some of the advantages and disadvantages of the different alignments. If you're lawful, it's easy to get an artifact weapon, Excalibur, near the beginning of the game. And the Gnomish Mines are easier because they're more peaceful monsters. On the other hand, lawful characters um, have the uh, disadvantage that your alignment record is decreased if you steal from a shop or if you just use a poisoned weapon. And during the end game, the mysterious force delays lawful characters more. I typically play as neutral. Um, advantages for neutral characters, you can get Magic Bane, Mjolnir, and Cleaver from sacrificing, and they're good weapons. There are no real disadvantages for neutral characters. Chaotic characters have the advantages that there is less of a penalty for murder, and you can sac sacrifice your own race if you want. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if your god is angry with you, modif mollifying him is harder. And I just, like I said, I just play neutral. <clears throat> hit points. This is your current and maximum hit points. Hit points are your health. When your current hit points hit zero, you die, unless you're polymorphed or you're wearing an amulet of life saving. You lose hit points when monsters hit or attack you, but you regain them over time up to your maximum. When uh, my hit points are low, I hurry to some stairs and I wait, like by typing a number and dot, 5-5 five, five dot or something. You can see that I've turned on my hit point bar with the hit point bar option. With that on, I die less often. This is a bar that shows how much of your maximum hit points you have. It turns red when your hit points are low. Some ways to increase your maximum hit points include gaining experience levels. Uh, if you have higher constitution, you gain more maximum hit points when you gain an experience level. You can quaff the healing potions, preferably blessed while you're already at your maximum HP, like I am here. Uh, nurse dancing can increase your maximum hit points. Praying at a co-aligned altar where you get a golden glow, it'll heal you and increase your max hit points. And Fuku by Encounters can increase max hit points, and I have videos on most of those. Uh, next is your power. Power is your magical energy, your mana. It's your spell, your spell casting attribute. You learn spells by reading spell books, and casting spells uses up your power. Higher level spells use more power, but you regain power over time. And if your wisdom is higher, you regain your power more quickly. Your maximum power increases as you gain experience levels or from quaffing potions of gain energy, preferably blessed while you're at a max while you're at the maximum power. Your armor class, your AC, it's your defense against standard monster attacks. Like a golf score, the lower the AC number is, the better. A beginning character, like me in this game, usually has an AC of 10. Uh, before you ascend, you usually want to have your AC at minus 30 or lower. And you improve your AC mostly by wearing armor. So my armor here is a leather armor, plus zero. <clears throat> I'm going to take that off, and you can see that my base AC is 10. I wear it. My AC drops to 8 because leather armor uh, decreases your armor class by 2 at plus 0. If this were a plus 1 leather armor, then my AC would be 7. If it was a minus 1 leather armor, my AC would be 9. 
you can improve your base AC armor, your base AC, uh, which you have with no armor at all, uh, by praying at a co-aligned altar or by donating money to a priest. Uh, here I'm displaying my experience. I am using the show EXP option, so I'm seeing not just my current experience level, but also my current hit points. I just started the game, so I have no, uh, sorry, experience level and experience points. I just started the game, haven't killed a monster, so I have uh, zero experience points. Let's go kill a monster, and you can see now I killed the cobalt zombie, and I got one experience point, since he's a wimpy monster. Uh, you can, uh, when you level up, you, when you or gain an experience point, when your experience, you level up or gain an experience level when your experience points hit some predefined level. For example, when you reach 20 experience points, you reach experience level 2, and when you reach 10,000 experience points, you'll reach experience level 11. Uh, the maximum experience level is 30, but even after that, your HP and your power will continue to increase if you quaff potions of gain level or eat wraith corpses. And your skill slots, you gain one skill slot with every experience level gained. I have a concise net hack video on training with weapons and, and spells that explains more. As your experience level and your dungeon level increase, more powerful monster types are randomly generated. That's why uh, on level one and experience level one, your monsters are all wimpy. Okay, those are the attributes that are displayed. The T here is the number of turns. Uh, there are also some attributes that are not displayed that I want to cover quickly. But first, let's talk about intrinsic and extrinsic attributes. An intrinsic attribute is a property your character has internally. If you take off all your rings, armor, and amulets and drop everything in your inventory, if you still have the attribute, it's an intrinsic. An extrinsic is an attribute or property your character gets by carrying or wearing an item like a ring, an amulet, or a quest artifact. For example, if you zap yourself with a wand of speed monster, you increase your speed intrinsic. If you wear speed boots, you increase your, increase your speed extrinsic. And let's talk about speed a little more. Speed affects how many moves you or monsters get per turn. Higher speed is helpful for running away and for attacking monsters more often than they attack you. Speed calculations are complicated, but I like to think of my speed as being normal, fast, or very fast. You start with normal speed. I often become fast by zapping myself with a wand of speed monster or through praying at a co-aligned altar that gives me an intrinsic speed boost. Then you become very fast by wearing speed boots. That gives me an additional extrinsic speed boost. If you are fast or very fast, you can get extra moves per turn. A fast character can average about one and one third moves per turn and a very fast character can average about one and two thirds moves per turn. But if you're carrying too much, you get fewer turns. For example, an overtaxed character can average about one move every five turns. Another attribute is your alignment record. We've already talked about your alignment, but your alignment record is different. It's an attribute that impacts how much your god approves of your actions. A higher alignment record means better outcomes when praying. Uh, also, sacrificing to convert an altar will instead convert you if you have a negative alignment record, and there are other penalties. If your, align or your alignment record improves as you kill monsters, it's decreased by actions like attacking your pet or peaceful monsters. Sometimes I do attack peaceful monsters. In fact, often I do, because you can still gain experience and items by killing them, and peaceful monsters can get in the way when you try to run away. I've been killed multiple times because a peaceful monster won't get out of the way when I need to, I need to run. I always try to kill a hostile monster after killing a peaceful one to improve my alignment record before I pray. Speaking of killing peaceful monsters, don't kill co-aligned unicorns because not only does that hurt your alignment record, it also decreases your luck by five. 
you can use a ring of conflict to have other monsters kill coaline unicorns if you need to kill them. I've got a video about altar camping. When I camp at an altar, I like to use blue jellies and a ring of conflict to clear out the extra peaceful unicorns. Uh, blue jelly's passive attack deals damage, and it makes the blue jelly stronger, and it may make the blue jelly divide into two. So with conflict, you can farm blue jellies around your altar, and they will kill peaceful monsters for you, including co-aligned unicorns. Luck is another hidden attribute. Your luck, uh, your luck affects lots of things in the game, like whether you hit or miss when attacking, whether you find things when searching, whether a door opens when you try. It affects wish wishing with magic lamps. It affects how many items are identified with a scroll of identify. And it impacts getting good results from praying. So you want your luck to be high. The main way to increase your luck is by sacrificing uh, powerful monsters after your prayer timeout has expired. You'll see a four-leaf clover when your luck increases from prayer. You can also increase your luck by throwing if a... Uh, a co-aligned, sorry, a valuable gem to a co-aligned unicorn. But lots of things will decrease your luck, including breaking a mirror. If you're in Sokoban, if you break a boulder or jump before you solve the puzzle, killing a co-aligned unicorn, as I mentioned, hurts your luck. Praying before your prayer time out expires hurts your luck. If your luck is either positive or negative, every 600 turns it moves one step closer to zero. Zero is the normal base level of luck. So if your luck is plus two or minus two in 1,200 turns, it will be at zero. Carrying an uncursed luck stone or other luck item stops this from happening. If your luck is positive, it will stay positive, and if your luck is negative, it will stay negative. Carrying a blessed luck stone stops your positive luck from decreasing, but still allows negative luck to move to zero. Uh, I sacrifice enough that I don't usually worry about negative luck, but I will sometimes bless my luck stone just to make it harder for monsters to curse it, because if you carry a blessed or uncursed luck stone, you get a plus three luck boost, but if you're carrying a cursed luck stone, your luck is lowered by three. I want to talk about two more attributes that are hidden from you, magic resistance and magic cancellation. You need the magic resistance attribute for protection against traps, spells, wants, and lots of special monster attacks. So you should get it as soon as possible because you probably won't ascend without it. You can get the magic resistance attri attribute by wearing a cloak of magic resistance or drag dragon scale mail or drag great dragon scales. Uh, you can wield magic bane to get magic resistance and many quest artifacts also give you magic resistance. So here are a few things that the magic resistance extrinsic protects you against. Polymorph traps, teleport traps, level 12 teleport traps, magic missile wands and magic missile attacks from monsters, monster spells like destroy armor, drain strength, and confusion. Magic resistance protects you from insta-death from a wand of death or touch of death or a finger of death spell. And magic resistance protects you from these things 100% of the time. There's no dice roll involved. Uh, getting magic resistance is one of my primary mid-game goals. Now magic cancellation. I think magic cancellation is mis misnamed. Uh, maybe a better name would have been special melee attack cancellation. Magic cancellation has a chance to protect you from monster special attacks, usually where they hit you with some part of their body like a headbutt, a kick, a bite, or a sting. For example, magic cancellation can sometimes protect you from poison damage from a killer bee's sting, lycanthropy from a were-creature's bite, sleep from a homunculus bite, shock damage from an electric eel, the sticking to attack from a large mimic bite, teleporting caused by a quantum mechanic claw, constitution draining caused by a rabid rat bite, and some others. Magic cancellation doesn't protect you from the regular damage from those attacks, just the special damage. So a killer bee can still kill you, it just might not poison you. Magic cancellation won't protect you from passive attacks and gaze attacks, so it won't protect you from floating eyes, blue jellies, cockatrices, or from medusa. Magic cancellation is similar to regular cancellation, like from a wand of cancellation or a spell of cancellation, but it's not exactly the same. 
Canceling a monster outright completely removes that monster's special attack, like if you use a wand of cancellation. But magic cancellation only decreases the probability of success of that attack. And the list of special attacks prevented by cancellation isn't exactly the same as the list of special attacks decreased by magic cancellation. Also, don't confuse magic cancellation with magic, resist magic resistance. Even though their names are similar, the two are very different. There are four possible levels of magic cancellation. MC0, magic cancellation 0, is no magic cancellation at all. Uh, MC1 prevents from 30% of special melee attacks. MC2 prevents 60% of special me melee attacks. And MC3 has a 90% chance of preventing a special melee attack. If you zap a Wand of Enlightenment or quaff a Potion of Enlightenment, you get a message about your MC level. With MC1, you see you are, uh, you are warded. With MC2, you are guarded. With MC3, you are protected. One of the reasons magic cancellation is understood so poorly is these messages are so cryptic. NetHack just doesn't give you many hints about what magic cancellation is and how much protection you get. So, how do you get magic cancellation? Generally from armor. To get MC1, you can wear most any body armor or cloak. So if you're wearing a body armor and a cloak, you very likely have some protection. To get MC2, you can wear mithril armor or plate armor or a robe or oilskin cloak. You get MC3 by wearing a cloak of protection. Magic cancellation from armor doesn't stack. Your, your actual magic cancellation number is determined by the best single piece of armor or other magic cancellation item you're wearing. If you get protection from praying or donating to a priest, that gives you MC1, but that doesn't stack with armor. Wearing a single ring of protection adds one to your MC, and it does stack with armor with a maximum of MC3. So, for example, if you have MC2 from wearing a robe, you can bump that to MC3 with a ring of protection. Wearing two rings of protection or other source will still only provide a single plus one boost to your MC. And starting with NetHack 3.7, an amulet of guarding adds two to your MC with a maximum of MC3. That's a lot, but that's all I want to cover for now. I hope you've enjoyed this concise NetHack video about char character attributes. I invite you to watch the other concise NetHack videos to learn lots of tips and tricks about playing NetHack. Thanks for watching.